The Wawa Cup Series chase begins on Saturday at the Nashville Super Speedway. There's no chase here in the Sprint Series, though, and Guadalmero comes into this one with 11 races left, 40 points ahead of the field. But still a long ways left to go until we crown a champion at the Darlington Raceway, and it's our last standalone event of the season. Still in the vicinity of the Nashville Super Speedway. We're just a little bit closer to downtown. It's the Nashville Fairground Speedway. We are here for the Music City 250 laps of action around the 0.596 mile speedway in Nashville, Tennessee. Hello, everybody. This is AG here, and welcome to the Nashville Fairground Speedway. We are here for what I do believe is the first time ever officially on the channel at this racetrack and uh, this whole thing kind of came together as a racetrack that I thought you know would make a good standalone event for the sprint series and here we are of course the cup series is going to be at the super speedway on Saturday to open up the chase gentlemen alongside me is unfortunately not in the chase been a bit of a rough season for you there over at Ennis Racing but hey last standalone event for these guys here in the Hurst sprint series and Huge opportunity for the driver starting on the pole position. That's Corey Case in the 99 who comes into this race. Only 50 points behind Juan Romero, of course. So Juan Romero's got a huge point lead coming into this one. But hey, if you're Corey Case, you've had a great season. Even though you missed three races so far, still an opportunity at winning the championship. What do you need to do starting from the pole position here to go to victory lane at the Nashville Fairgrounds? You know, just using that track position to your advantage. That's uh, going to be the main thing there for that 99. Um, and also, of course, just making sure, uh, uh, making all the sign-ups up from here on out. But, uh, but no, yeah, this is great to see that he's up front here for this thing. It's going to give him a great chance to try to close in. Um, 11 races is plenty of time uh, to close in uh, for the point lead. Um, I remember a specific series that I did a long time ago. Um, a, a gentleman was leading the truck series championship by quite the margin, seemed unstoppable, and then in like the final five races completely imploded and, and lost it. So anything can happen in this stretch. Uh, but with this being a short track, uh, track position is, is going to be a little more crucial. So uh, that 99 is in a great spot to try to make up said points. And speaking of the points, you see him on your screen right there. Guan Romero, like I said, 40 points on the field. The maximum amount of points that you can get here in the Sprint Series is 27. You got Chris Reynolds there, who's second in points. He's had a great season himself. Of course, he starts a little bit deeper in the field. Nathan Faden also a little bit deeper in the field as well for this one. 46 points behind. But Corey Case starting on the pole, 50 points behind. And of all these guys who are still in championship contention, he is definitely the guy who's got... You know, interesting scenario because he has to sign up each and every week. He's missed three races this season, but he won the Dash for Cash back at the Hillside International Speedway in May. And you know he's a very solid driver, fourth in the standings, and actually the best average finishing position of anyone who has made 18 starts or more this season. Zane Davison is the only other driver with a better average finishing position, but he hasn't raced in quite a while. Uh, then he also got the... Uh, 92 of Brandon Nelson there in fifth, 60 points behind. Vinny Scholes, unfortunately, not in this one. She is 75 behind. Her chances look like they might be done, but ball stars deep. Dylan Matthews still have a mathematical chance. Alex and Rowe is back in the field. He starts 24th tonight, however, 81 points behind. And all eyes are on Guan Romero. Had a great run last week at Pikes Peak, and we'll have to see what he can do this week. You got Corey Case and Leonard Koshmer. Of course, Koshmer won Last week at the Pikes Peak International Raceway, his first career win on the channel. He's at the outside pole of Corey Case, Santiago Labrito, and Anthony McClure. Still trying to make his first cup race of the year. 69 machine of Duncan Ward to the inside of the 90 machine of Matt Black. We got Guan Romero in the 87, starting 7th to the inside of Dylan Matthews. 0-2 is Joey Brown, the Iowa winner from two weeks ago, to the inside of the 52, driven by Chris Reynolds. 25 machine there is Aaron Abel to the inside of the 93 machine, driven by Matt Hunter. We got the 57 machine there of Carson Miller to the inside of Stuart Gratton in the 64. Skylar Taylor to the inside of Matthew Burnett in the 53. You got Christian Master and Matt Grice. 50 machine this week is driven by Josh Petty to the inside of Nathan Faden. Baltazar Steep and the 80 machine of Joshua Brown. And then it's Brandon Nelson and Alexander Rowe, the only driver who was not in last week's race. So 23 of these guys were in last week's race at Pikes Peak. We'll have to see if that streak continues for some of these guys, including Corey Case. 
driving that number 99. Let's go ahead and get these guys to roll off here from the Nashville Fairground Speedway. And Andrew, it's going to be a very interesting race here tonight. Of course, this being a short track, track position is going to mean quite a bit. How do you think it's all going to play out for these guys here in this Music City 200? Uh, I would have to imagine uh, inside lane is going to be the place to be. Um, that's why, because uh, I know the question's coming, uh, who the pick's going to be, and I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, go for the pole sitter here on uh, that number 99. Uh, but, uh, of course, so starting on the inside, in seventh is Juan Romero, and uh, that's already a great spot to at least uh, damage control if he's not going to be able to win this thing, but the 99 does. Uh, but at the very least, uh, maybe even, or at the very most, try to maybe even extend that lead. We'll have to see. Well, Corey Case is definitely a good pick. He's been great this season in the Sprint Series. Two wins on the year at Daytona and Oregon. Looking for win number three here tonight. Here we go. Off the exit of turn number four, we're green flag racing at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway for the last standalone event for Sprint Series Night in America. Corey Case is going to get a bonus point towards the championship as the caution's out. And around went the 57 of Carson Miller. He's got some damage in that machine. It looks like Dylan Matthews may have also gotten caught up in whatever this was. And there's damage on the 25 of Aaron Abel as well. I will say uh, this thing about Aaron Abel, he's the only driver not full-time who has been in every race so far this season. Aaron Abel's been able to sign up each and every week during this entire Sprint Series season. So, not necessarily the way these guys wanted to start this race off. It looks like... No, I think there's damage on the 1. It's mainly the 25 and the 57 getting caught up in this one. So, that'll give us a single file restart pretty early on here in this Music City 200. And here we go for our first yellow of the... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's our first yellow of the night. Well, we thought we thought it was Dylan Matthews up front there. Baltazar Steep and the 50 machine of Josh Petty got into it in the back of the field. And then further up, Dylan Matthews gets sent around by the 25 machine of Aaron Abel. So we had two wrecks occur on the first lap of this race. That's where Carson Miller gets his damage in the Chris Reynolds up in the 93 of Matt Hunter. And uh, these guys here reeling from it as well. Josh Petty and Baltazar Steep in the back of the field. Definitely a unique lap right there. Hopefully that will not necessarily be the case for the rest of the night here at the Fairground Speedway. Yeah, 3 2 wide just ain't going to work no matter what we're at here. Although, yeah, the 50 it looked like just kind of came down on there. So that was the initial caution. A little more carnage this time, though, with the... Coming up here, yeah, 57 taking a pretty good look. Uh, but it uh, doesn't look too bad. Hopefully short track uh, shouldn't be uh, too catastrophic for these guys. So Corey Case leads the field. We're going to have ourselves a single file restart here in the Music City 200. Let's see how it all goes down here at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway. We're back here at the Nashville Fairgrounds Speedway after a caution on the first lap of the race. So... Uh, Maybe not the most ideal time. I'm going to cut a couple laps off of it here. But you got Carson, or should I say, Corey Case in the 99. Carson Miller's been in this ride a lot this season. But he was the one caught up in the accident in the 57. You know, that's Corey Case's, one of Corey Case's normal rides there in the 57 machine. Everybody's still on the lead lap after that, however. You got the 99 leading. Santiago Laparito is second. He got Willow Springs, another standalone event this year. Duncan Ward, Leonard Kachmer, and there he is. Juan Romero running fifth right now. Green flag back in the air with 45 laps to go in this Music City 200. And Santiago looking to the inside of Corey Case, unable to as Case shuts the door on him. Oh, I thought he was going to get the bumper there. That was awfully close. Romero put to the outside. That is not what he wants. See if he can try to get the run off here, trying to file in front of the 05. Not going to be able to do that. Yeah, look at that lane just get really tight. He just had to check up there, and uh, yeah, there's just no grip up there. And uh, Unless he gets down. Oof. Oh, and another That's yellow. Right. And this time it's the 53 
That car driven by Matthew Burnett going around, and Romero's going to lose a lot of ground. He's in the outside wall. They're a little squirrely wow. tonight, aren't they? Just a little. Just a little bit. So two quick cautions here in this Music City 200. We're going to try to cut a couple laps off of the uh, caution period here so we get more racing. There's no pit stops needed for these guys. Tough break for Matthew Burnett. Only a second career start on the channel. His first was last week at Pikes Peak. We'll have to see if he uh, ends up running more races in the future. Maybe gets a full-time truck ride. That is possible. Let's definitely see uh, some of these guys get full-time truck rides. Corey Case is a guy I can definitely see in a truck ride this season. Going full-time. I know you're going to be uh, driving this season, Andrew. Excited to see uh, where you end up at. And I don't know if you've signed for a team yet this year. Uh, as of this recording, uh, negative. You'll definitely get a ride one way or another. We'll figure that out. All right. Second caution of the night. Let's go ahead and see what happened to bring it out with Matthew Burnett getting caught up in this one. It is not a good day for this third. Yeah, not a good day for Dylan Matthews here at Nashville Fairgrounds. Overshooting the corner. And uh, into the outside wall, Christian Master sideswipe Matthew Burnett. Just the wrong angle. That 53 gets sent around. And then Joshua Brown in the 80. This runs right into the quarter panel right there. But that's all the time. Only one wreck this time, so we're improving right now. Hopefully uh, the next time we have a caution, it's no wreck. At this rate, that's how it's going to be. I know that logic doesn't work, but hopefully there won't be a next wreck. That's the logic of that. We'll have to see Matthew Burnett around, but he's still in the race in that number 53 machine. Well, yeah, it's 39. Uh, yeah, I'm sure even this early on in the race, I don't, I don't. I think he's about done with this track. If there's a good hard lick there, even a little side slap there for the one. Let's see, right, even the one is uh, getting caught up in some stuff here, which is not going to be good for his uh, points hopes if he's hoping for a good finish here. But uh, wait, yeah, this has turned into a. Yeah, quite an interesting one, wouldn't you say? Definitely. We're not even a tenth or a fifth of the way through this race, essentially. So, we'll see how the rest of it goes. Corey Case, your race leader. Let's see what happens on the restart here in the Music City 200. All right, we're back here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. And already two quick cautions. Really haven't had much of a chance to really race this one out. Corey Case, though, is liking that. Santiago Labrito, Duncan Ward... Leonard Koshmer, Joey Brown. That is the top five. Where's Koshmer and Brown? The last two winners here in the Sprint Series on Iowa and Pikes Peak. And uh, those are two tracks that uh, definitely want to use that short track chassis. Of course, this is a true short track. Less than six-tenths of a mile here at the Nashville Fairgrounds. Everybody's still on the lead lap, including Matthew Burnett, who was just caught up in that accident. Waltzar Steep currently last in the running order as we're back underway and not a good jump that time for Corey Case. Labrito has a shot here. But Corey, oh, it's going to be tight off the exit. And Labrito's got a shot to the inside of Corey Case for the race lead. And they're going to be side by side going into turn number three. In case trying to get the run off there. Nope, there's that tightness. There's just nothing up there. We saw what happened to Romero fell back like seven spots once he got stuck up there. I wouldn't be surprised if maybe the 99 is going to have the same fate here. Unless he's able to get down the inside. A lot of racing for the back of the field. And how about Duncan Ward in the 69 up to the second position. Leonard Koshmer looking to go two in a row after getting his debut win last week at Pikes Peak. Of course, he's still in that 13 for Titan Fury. Joey Brown is here. We may almost go three wide. Corey Case has to be careful here not to get caught up in a wreck because he still has Romero behind him as he's trying to close in on him on that championship. There's still 11 races left to go, including this one here tonight. There's still a good opportunity for Corey Case as Koshmer way overshoots it. There is, yeah, just like you're saying, Andrew, there is no grip on that outside, and they are really losing him. How about Carson Miller in the 57? He's top 10 with that buckle on his hood right there. Trying to get around Corey Case. As for the race lead, Duncan Ward to the inside of Santiago Labrito, and already our third different leader of the night here in the Music City 200. Boy, this trick is racy. That's a... I mean, that's kind of the one thing when you have a uh, a bad outside line. I mean, that's honestly, that's going to be the better place to uh, have very little grip at because if it's on the outside, well, then you really can't pass at all. And uh, I've witnessed that the hard way on both offline and online. So 
This is pretty good stuff. It's the top three have pulled away, and uh, the 99 is still going backwards. And even the 87 is struggling back there. Stuart Gratton and Skylar Taylor battling right there behind Corey Case, and Corey's going to slam that wall, and Stuart... <laughs> oh, he ain't going to save it that time. Alexander Rowe right into him. And already our third caution of the night here, the Nashville Fairgrounds. And Alexander Rowe is destroyed in that 96 machine. That is going to end his night. And Stuart Gratton almost saved it, but just couldn't quite hold on to it. And uh, thankfully for Corey Case, he did not get caught up in anything more. He has a bit of damage in the 99 machine, but uh, wasn't too bad for him right there. All right, already our third yellow flag of the night. Dylan Matthews in the 39, also with some heavy damage as well. She's got some right side damage to her car right there. You know, we got one heck of an, a lucky escape there was the 87. I thought he was barreling for the 64 there, but checked up, and I don't think it's any worse for wear. And one position ahead of him is Corey Case. So in terms of that championship, we're going to pull away even more from some of these guys. And his other top contenders are ahead of him in this race. Chris Reynolds, Nathan Faden, and Brandon Nelson all behind him. So we'll have to see how it ends up shaking out. Duncan Ward, however, is leading this field in the 69. Trying to get his first career win on the channel. Will it be three weeks in a row? First time winners. We'll have to see. But first, let's see what we have to bring up the third caution of the night here in this Music City 200 at the Nashville Fairgrounds. And this time around, Corey Case, who was the dominant driver of the race early on. Overshoots the wall and kind of similar to the Burnett and Matthews crash we had earlier on. Stuart Gratton gets it into the quarter panel. He keeps it straight. Romero, that was close for Guan Romero. His teammate, however, could not avoid it. Alex and Rowe right into the rear of Stuart Gratton. And that right there enough to trigger the yellow. Took him a while to throw it right there. Matt Grice in the four. Also getting a piece of that one. Everyone else avoids it. But that is going to knock Alex in a row out of the race. That was a hard hit straight on into that engine. And that will be the end of the night. For the driver who started out the season with 10 straight top 10s, it has definitely not been a good season since the beginning for Alex in a row. And so you go from the hero to zero awfully quick for this 99. He was already dropping back and then that happened. Uh, Gratton ended up as, with the, as an innocent bystander in that and few other guys getting hits including the one again but uh, ultimately the 96 though is going to be the one who you're is, obsessed uh, with that one going to be uh, well I mean isn't he second in points going into this thing third or but third? you know pretty close to uh, that third, okay. a moment right there with Matt Hunter doing a little crossover on him all right yeah, well now bad, it's I... Duncan Ward leading the field in the 69 let's see what he can do ahead of Santiago Labrito and Joey Brown on the restart here in the Music City 200 we're back once again after our third caution of the night here in the Music City 200. What is it with races in Tennessee and us having a lot of cautions? <laughs> you remember Bristol? That was uh, Music City. They're all listening to music during the race. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You don't remember Bristol? Either. Bristol Cup race, Wawa Cup Series race, to be exact. Uh, Record number of cautions in that one. We're almost pushing the record for these guys. Not even halfway through this one. Oh no! Duncan War has a problem in the 69 from the race lead. Oh no! That isn't good at all. And will he be able to even green. get back around? That's the big question because they're taking the green flag. Santiago's got the race lead. Duncan Ward's off the pace. Oh brother. And now you got Matt Black. Remember, Matt Black was in that top three last week at Pikes Peak with Kochmer and Romero. He's up to third now. Joey Brown is second. Labarito there in the race lead. And Duncan Ward on the pit lane and out of the race. What a shame. Only other driver out is Alexander Rowe from that last accident. Look who's in top four right now. Anthony McClure looking to get his first cup start of the season in that 05 machine. Oh, and in the wall, hard goes the 90. They are really getting loose off that exit. It's a rookie mistake there out of Matt Black, and McClure's going to take the spot. Here comes Joey Brown trying to get around Santiago Labarito for the race lead. Boy, this is uh, some chaos if I've ever seen it uh, through multiple uh, incidents and then some failures. 
87's charging back up. That's not what anyone else wants to see. But uh, no surprise. I mean, he's, he's been getting it done this season. As uh, we are going to be halfway next time. By goodness gracious. We are getting close to each other off the exits of these corners. McClure is going to go wide again. And Matt Black's going to take third back away. Christian Master to the inside there for the fourth position. Here comes Skyler Taylor in the 55 as well. And Guaramero somehow, someway still has a top 10 run going for him right now. As Joshua Browns are on the outside wall. They were not doing this when I tested. Once you know it, Nathan Faden looks like he's going to slow. He didn't. I thought he was going to go straight for that outside wall. Here comes Taylor on Christian Master. That's for the fourth position, the last transfer spot for the hot seat in the Cracker Barrel 400 on Saturday at the Super Speedway. McClure to the inside for fifth right there. You also got Koshmer in the middle of all this and Guan Romero as well in the middle of all this. Brandon Nelson comes into this race 60 points behind. Would love to gain at least something on Romero in this race. He might actually have an opportunity of doing so. Romero a little wide off the exit right there. And it's Brandon Nelson taking that position away as Corey Case continues to slip back. But in the meantime, how about Santiago Labrito pulling away one and a half seconds for him. Got the win at Willow Springs back in March. But since then has really not found too much success in this series. Right now he is dominating here in the Music City 200 at the Nashville Fairgrounds. He got the 90 machine here in second of Matt Black. Joey Brown there in third. You got Skyler Taylor, Anthony McClure, Leonard Kochmer getting sent around by Brandon Nelson. My goodness. And our fourth caution of the night. Boy, we had a great view of those uh, second two cautions there, didn't we? We sure or did. Yeah. Well, Santiago Labrito did not want to see that. He had a one and a half second lead plus on Matt Black, and now Matt Black's going to be right behind him on the restart. This is going to be a very interesting restart as well because we've definitely had some guys move through this field who uh, definitely have an opportunity of winning this race, like Skyler Taylor, Anthony McClure. It gets a little dicey up front. It can definitely get interesting. All right, fourth caution of the night. Let's quickly review it and then get back to racing here in the Music City 200 at Nashville. And we're just going to replay this one one time. Brandon Nelson, a little too trigger happy off the exit with Leonard Kochmer. And around the 13 goes. Definitely the most mild accident of the night, but uh, going to send Kochmer to the back of the field. So Santiago Laurito trying to get his second win of the season. Let's see what he can do on the restart here in the Music City 200. All right, back after our fourth caution here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. And uh, still got a little ways to go in this one as well. Going to restart lap 34 of 50 with 17 laps to go. Santiago Laurito is your race leader in the five. Matt Black, Joey Brown, Skyler Taylor, Anthony McClure, the top five. Only two of these guys have gone the victory lane this season. Flaborito at Willow Springs and Joey Brown at Iowa, so we could very well see another first time winner this season. Duncan Ward back on the racetrack, four laps down. Everybody else still on the lead lap. Oh boy, not the best of jumps there for Laborito. Matt Black trying to find some way around him right here. They all stay in the single file line for now. Albeit right on each other's tails. I'm going to send a shout out here to the 92. Started second to last inside of the last row. And is now making a move here for a top five. I did not see that coming on a track like this. How about Brandon Nelson? A great night for this 92 team. And hey, your team essentially in this racing. I know you guys have not had the best of seasons at all anywhere on the channel. But uh, Brandon Nelson... Trying to make Nathan happy here tonight. Labrador still hanging on. Matt Black got to the back bumper and had the check up there. McClure to the inside of Skyler Tail for position. And Corey Case getting around Juan Romero. Romero slipping back in the 87. That's not good for him and him trying to hold on to that significant points lead. Of course, he definitely has a cushion, but you don't want to eat away at that cushion. Still with 11 races left to go, 10 races left to go after tonight. Especially considering our next race is at the Chicagoland Speedway. You know that is going to get wild a week from now in the Windy City 150. 
Matt Black's closing in here on Labrita for the race lead. A really good run there off the exit of turn number four. And he might have a shot right here as Labrita goes wide. And Matt Black to the inside. Only his third ever start on the channel. And there he goes for the race lead on lap 38. He forced Labrito into that mistake right there, forced him to overdrive it a little bit, and uh, he took the bait, and uh, very, very fortunate to be able to slot back into second place there. He could have dropped way back if he wasn't careful. These guys are still just all on each other, and Matt Black has to be careful not to make that same mistake. Let all these guys back around him a little wide this time, though. Amazing, man. You know, that groove, you just get out of it enough, and away you go. And that is something that uh, we've seen so much here tonight around this Nashville Fairground Speedway. And Labrador's going to do it again. Joey Brown's got a shot there for the second position. This is a guy to watch out for. Got the win in Iowa. Not exactly the same exact type of track like Iowa, but there are some characteristics to it that uh, definitely fit Joey Brown's style, I feel like, after he got that win. Oh, but he's uh, definitely checking up a little bit right there. Brandon Nelson up to the third position. And Brandon Nelson got the win at Martinsville. His one win came at the short track earlier this season. The time's running out here in the Music City 200 for Matt Black in the 90 for Joey Brown and all these guys. Anthony McClure trying to make it into the cup race for the first time this season. He has to get around Brandon Nelson, or should I say Santiago Labarito, in order for that to happen. He finished fifth last week at Pikes Peak. That's his first top five of the season. The full-time driver here in this series, and he is yet to make a cup race, a cup start this year. How about Balthazar Steep in the 88 machine to the inside there of Matthew Burnett. Remember, Burnett got sent around earlier. He's top ten right now. And how about Juan Romero continuing to slip back. Corey Case looking to gain a couple of points on him. Brandon Nelson's definitely going to gain some points on him, and he continues to slip back in the 87. Master and getting around McClure. Well. Baltazar Steep also looking for a position on the 05. Golly, what are we coming for? So many comers and goers that I would never have seen uh, happen, in, like I said earlier, in a race like this. So 53 is coming back up here. Ethan Faden has gotten by a few guys and is now... Uh, also looking to close in on that 87's uh, point lead. Oh, here comes Joey. That 02. Battle of the colors. We've got a chance here. Oh my goodness. That 90's going to slam the outside wall. And Joey Brown takes the race lead with four laps to go. He just made that same mistake. That's the second time Matt Black's done that here tonight. Oh, but Joey was a little wide off the exit. And here comes Matt Black once again. It's not over yet. It's not over yet. Going to be three laps to go next time by in the Music City 200. Labarito on the outside wall hard. And Master going to try to get around him on the outside lane. That ain't going to work for Master. So now it's a three-horse race here. The Nashville Fairground Speedway. Will Matt Black have a shot around Joey Brown for this race lead? Brandon Nelson is there as well. Two to go for Joey Brown. Looking to get his second win in three weeks here in the Her Sprint Series. He's got a good gap here as long as he keeps it clean, which is easier said than done at a track like this. Just has to hold on to it one final lap. White flag here. And Matt Black's going to go wide again. Brandon Nelson looking to take second away from the 90. And only unless Joey Brown makes a terrible mistake like Matt Black did earlier on. Oh my goodness, he just did. Brandon Nelson to the inside on the final lap. And Brandon Nelson for NS Racing is going to lead one lap to get the win in the Music City 200. Oh my goodness gracious. What? Second to last and he wins it. How about that for Brandon Nelson? Grabbing the race victory here at the Nashville Fairground Speedway in a wacky race here on the short track. That was some serious fun right there. Oh my. I, I, I am mind blown. I also just realized I may have been, I, I don't know if I accidentally called a, a Nathan Faden, a Brandon Nelson by accident, but uh, regardless though. My goodness, there, there, there was just so little grip out there, and these guys were all over the place. 
but, but they knew it was like, this is such a short race. We got top four to get here. Let's go for it. And my goodness, were they going for it? But unfortunately, that 0-2 just went for it too hard at the end. And I, I feel for him. That's going to sting. But uh, holy moly, congratulations to the 92. Man, what a race there. Wow, that was uh, unexpected there. Joey Brown is overshooting. Turn number two in the last lap of the race. Santiago Labarito's got the fastest time. He'll have the pole position for Chicagoland next week. Duncan Ward's got the second quickest time. Joey Brown, third quickest. I'm sure he's uh, still reeling from that one. Take a look at the rest of the fastest laps right there. In reference for next week's starting lineup at Chicagoland. Wow. That was fun. Uh, definitely a lot of fun here tonight at the Nashville Fairground Speedway. Brandon Nelson gets it done on a last lap pass after Joey Brown's mistake. And Joey Brown's going to fall to third because of that. Matt Black gets runner-up and Baltazar Steep gets the last transfer spot into the cup race on Saturday at the Nashville Super Speedway. Brandon Nelson will be in the 11 machine for Grand Autosport. Matt Black, I think, is going to be back with Appalachia. I think Appalachia jumped Team Williams if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong about that, though. Yeah, I think they did. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. E either way, they'll all be, all top four will all be in the race. Um, Matthew Burnett got spun around, finished sixth. Great for him right there. And uh, the only driver who failed to finish was Alexander Rowe. You know, even though we had a little bit of a rash of cautions, that was a fun race. And, uh, hey, definitely a, a fun one for our first time here at the fairgrounds. <laughs> that, that was pretty fun, I will admit. Um, just uh, looking at these finishes here. Uh, yep. Uh, Nathan Faden finishing ninth. Corey Case, 10th. And uh, Romero all the way down in 19th. And Chris Reynolds, 20th. So definitely going to be uh, some shift in there as far as uh, um, that the point lead. But uh, ultimately, yeah, that cushion's still going to be uh, coming into play there for Romero. He's got to try to get something good to happen to him, though, come Chicago land and uh, try to kind of build that back up just so that he kind of keeps it keeps it level at least that would be my strategy if i were him uh going into the next race trying to maintain that for these final uh, 11 races gonna be interesting to see how this championship plays out as well because the other side of that is Juan Romero like you said finishing 19th that's gonna be kind of interesting because you can't you can't be slipping 10 15 points a race with 10 races left to go and expect to win the title so it's going to be interesting to see if Brandon Nelson and Corey Case especially, um, and even hey, Chris Reynolds is going to stick with them. It's not really going to be uh, the best runs for him. Nathan Faden, though, he also gained some points on Romero, so it's going to tighten up a little bit up in the top there with those five guys. I think one of those five is going to get it. Uh, I don't think there's really anyone else that has a shot. Baltzar Steep might have a shot. We'll have to see. It's going to be interesting. Of course, our next race is at the Chicagoland Speedway, Windy City 150. It's going to be a fun one there in the mile and a half. One of our favorite mile and a halfs to go to. Of course, Cup Series is going to be there next Friday night. And, uh, hey, Brandon Nelson gets it done here at the Fairground Speedway in Nashville to get his second win of the season here in the Hurst Sprint Series. Thank you so much, Andrew, for joining me. Here are the points for the Hurst Sprint Series after 22 races. Ten races left to go until we crown a champion on Labor Day weekend at Darlington. That's all I got. So on behalf of Andrew Miller, congratulations to Brandon Nelson once again, and I will see you guys later.